Good evening and Jai Hind, dear children. Um, I know tomorrow you have your unit test. And so, you know, that thought actually provoked me to give you a short, rather brief explanation of the chapter Raising Scorpions, isn't it? So, um, before I start with it, let me uh, tell you something about the author. He is Gerald Durrell. So, the full name is Gerald Malcolm Durrell. He was a British naturalist, okay, um, writer, a zookeeper, um, probably you can say a conservationist and uh, as well a television presenter, okay. And uh, he's written many um, works and uh, the excerpt which we'll be talking about is from my family and other uh, animals. Okay, so when I told you that he was a conservationist, a naturalist, so that means, you know, um, we can understand that he had the love for nature and he had worked a lot for saving, conserving the nature. So that was about the author. And um, I can see that, you know, the very first question has been put up like do you know of anyone who keeps an unusual pet well mm, i have heard like um, i have discussed it in my class also that you know there are such weird people uh, you know uh, rather i should not say weird people due respect to them but yes they do have a different taste like uh, they can tame a monkey, they can tame a sloth bear, they can tame, um, you know, all types of snakes, okay? So these are some unusual animals who are tamed by some people, okay? And the usual ones are those, you know, kuchi, koo types, cute ones, the, yes, I'm talking about the dogs and the cats. So all the catty lovers and the doggo lovers, uh, a big, um, you know, mwah to all of you. But yes, be very cautious, those who are going for, you know, thinking of taming um, pets like sloth bear, like, uh, you know, some other wild animals, not to talk about leopard or tiger or lion or snakes. Okay, so let's start with this beautiful chapter. You know, uh, this chapter is uh, overall, it talks about a small child, how the child very closely observes all sorts of movements of a scorpion. Okay, and um, his craving reaches the zenith of, uh, you know, that zenith. Why? Because by end of the day, he thinks of taming that scorpion, bringing that scorpion at home and, you know, just hiding it. Because in his heart of hearts, he knew that it was poisonous and that it won't be allowed uh, by his family members. Okay, so I will uh, read it out and I'll also explain side by side. Okay, and uh, I really hope, I earnestly hope by end of the video, everyone will have no, I mean, everyone will be able to understand all your doubts would be clear. Okay, now um, this is on page number 76, unit 9, Raising Scorpions okay in your literature reader okay um now in the very first paragraph the author is talking about the characteristics of the scorpion okay to start with that the shyest and the most self-effacing of the wall community were the most dangerous you hardly ever saw one unless you looked for it and yet there must have been several hundred living in the cracks of the wall. So you see here the author is talking about where these uh, animals are generally found. You know, these animals, they are either found in deserts or in damp 
region or in damp places maybe within the cracks in the in those you know bricked walls or maybe uh, some muddy places okay so uh, this scorpion is you know different from the scorpions which are found in the deserts okay so you know uh, why the reason i clarified this because while i was teaching so many of my children they talked about the uh, you know that desert scorpions but these scorpions are different from them you know these scorpions are very small in size but the scorpions which are there in a desert they are very huge um would you like to see okay let me show the desert scorpions you know uh in that case all of you will be able to see what it looks like and i'm talking about those scorpions okay i got it now let me share um okay uh window mm -hmm. so i'm going to share the picture of all right so can you see these are the desert scorpions okay you have various types of scorpions like emperor scorpion desert hairy scorpion giant desert scorpion you have giant hairy scorpions okay so now uh since i ha i have already shared uh, this image in my video right now so i hope all of you are uh, you know closing it quite um closely what types i mean uh, how do they exactly look like okay can you see these uh, this tail all right then uh, these are the claws all right okay understood so we will be talking about this scorpion only you know these uh, basically the scorpion looks like this all right so now let me stop this sharing and get back okay so i will stop all right okay so now let me continue um yeah slide a knife blade carefully under a piece of the loose plaster and lever it gently away from the brick and there crouching beneath it would be a little black scorpion an inch long so you may underline that the size of this scorpion which the the author is talking about is one inch long okay looking as though he were made of polished chocolate okay so that means it was a pure uh, the appearance was just similar to a polished chocolate if you have chocolate you know if you just unwrap the chocolate don't you think uh, the surface of the chocolate seems to be very shiny and very polished similarly um the image the appearance of this scorpion was just like that so you may underline it the appearance was like polished chocolate they were weird looking things you may underline this also with their flattened oval bodies their neat crooked legs the enormous crab like claws bulbous and neatly joined as armor and the tail like a string of brown beads ending in a sting like a rose thorn so please underline these words because it talks about the appearance the exact appearance of the scorpion how it looked like okay all right the scorpion would lie there quite quietly as you examined him raising his tail in an almost apologetic gesture of warning if you breathe too hard on him if you kept him in the sun too long he would simply turn his back on you and walk away and then slide slowly but firmly under another section of plaster now this line children actually means you know that they are very shy the very first word denoted that they are the shyest creature so that means they did not uh, like you know uh, sun okay they hesitated sun all right and uh, that is the reason why they uh, again you know used to hide back in their uh, place where they were uh, there that time okay so that means they don't like sun they don't like light that is the reason why they are always found in a very damp place mostly in a damp place so let's see now the next paragraph uh, 
I grew very fond of these scorpions. I found them to be pleasant, unassuming creatures. Please underline pleasant, unassuming. With, on the whole, the most charming habit, habits, provided you did nothing silly or clumsy. That means if you don't harm them, they will surely not give you that sting. Okay? All right. Uh, now, next we come. Um, they must have found me rather a trial, for I was always ripping sections of the plaster away so that I could watch them or capturing them and making them walk about in jam jars so that I could see the way their feet moved. Now, this child was really inquisitive and always, you know, wanted to uh, catch hold of each and every movement made by the scorpion. Okay, so he had that vague idea, like, uh, you know, all those pranks type of idea, those naughty, naughty ideas, but yet very adventurous because um, uh, he being, you know, just like maybe one of you uh, trying to do something which had lots and lots of that daring thing was needed. Okay, despite of knowing that, you know, that it it might prove dangerous because he knew that scorpion was not, you know, uh, that pally pally, all right? It was nothing like, you know, a Labrador dog, lab dog, or maybe, you know, those, uh, uh, what do you say, those pugs. So scorpion wasn't like that, okay? But still, he tried, okay? And then he tried to capture them. Now, let's see what he did. By means of my sudden and unexpected assaults on the wall, I discovered quite a bit about the scorpions. So now, wherever those scorpions were, you know, trying to hide, he was just removing the plaster and was, again, observing them very closely. I found that they would eat blue, uh, blue bottles. And, you know, uh, please underline the next few names of the insects like grasshoppers, moth, uh, lacewing flies. These were the, were the things which the scorpions are fed on, okay? So these are their, uh, what do I say? Their uh, breakfast, dinner, lunch, snack, brunch, whatever you call. Several times I found them eating each other. A habit I found most distressing, you know? Uh, they used to eat, uh, I mean, few might have eaten each other so that was also you know type of uh, what do i say a practice which was seen in scorpion families i'm not talking about those zodiac scorpions because i'm also a scorpion anyway so let's get back by crouching under the wall at night with a torch i managed to catch some brief glimpses of the scorpions wonderful courtship dances i saw them standing close clasp their bodies raised to the skies their tails lovingly entwined you know so um this is i'm talking uh i'm on page 77 the very first paragraph it actually talks about how they used to do that you know uh kind of a dance so it's not definitely a ballet or hip-hop or something like that but a waltz and waltz is a very slow form of dance wherein you know uh they were entwining like this and then la 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 you know it was like this la 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 and they used to dance in this manner so that movement those dancing movements were very attracting were very eye-catching and uh that was something which was very phenomenal okay something very different okay so uh i will not go that deep into it so you just need to uh, understand that the movements were very graceful nobody could ever imagine in their dreams that scorpions could dance so well okay so it was not that real dance but yes they danced and that is dance is nothing but the movement made by these scorpions okay then one day i found a fat female scorpion in the wall wearing what at first glance appeared to be a pale fawn fur coat do you can you imagine a scorpion wearing a fur coat um no 
I can't imagine. But then if I talk about the hairy uh, scorpions, you know, all those hair on their body, if they have a lot of hair, so that would be very much like a fur coat. Now, um, this jacket, if you can see, uh, I'll just allow you to have this closer look. So this is actually kind of fur, okay? So now imagine these scorpion, this scorpion was having so much of hair that it looked as if, you know, it was having this kind of a, as if it was wearing this type of a jacket or this type of a coat, okay? So that is what uh, he sensed, he glanced, but definitely you must have gone through the text. It was not that. It wasn't that a scorpion was wearing a fur coat. <coughs> Sorry. So, <coughs> what was it? <coughs> Those who have read <coughs> might have understood, right? <coughs> I think I should drink water. <coughs> You know, <clears throat> I feel choked when I talk a lot and uh, with that same excitement. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm not going to have one on one with a scorpion. But yes, so now what he looked was what he, uh, you know, what he found towards uh, <clears throat> towards a closer look that that mama scorpion, that big scorpion wasn't actually wearing this type of a jacket. But yes. Mama Scorpion was having these small, small, tiny, tiny little babies. You know, they were crawling like this. And they were sitting on the mama's back. Okay. So that was what was happening. Okay. So I'll show you how it uh, looks like. So just um, can you uh, bring me better that kangaroo? I want to show how it looks when mama <clears throat> holds her baby. Well, thank you, Sudiksha. So this, can you see how mama clutches its own baby? So this is Joey and this is the kangaroo and this is the pouch, okay? So now imagine this is just a kangaroo st a stuffed toy. I don't have any scorpion to show you. But yes, uh, what I can make you understand is imagine if I keep this like a scorpion and those little tiny babies they were here they were all climbed here okay and they were in uh, such a manner that it looked as if it was <clears throat> you know a fur coat okay so that was a beautiful expression how gerald Durrell wrote all right so now let's see uh, I was enraptured by this family and I made up my mind to smuggle them into the house and up to my bedroom so that I might keep them and watch them grow up. With infinite care, I maneuvered the mother and family into a matchbox. Imagine he was so much um, like enraptured. He was so much surprised and he was so much attracted that uh, he managed to... Um, I don't have a matchbox in front of me or else I could have shown you. So all of you must be knowing the size of a matchbox. So uh, the author has not mentioned whether he was, you know, talking about the big matchbox, that home light. But yes, the matchbox usual, usual size is this much, a very small. Okay. So now what he did, what he must have done was he must have taken out the tray of the matchbox and then kept it in front of the scorpion so that, you know, they could come like this and enter the matchbox. And then he just, you know, put some, uh, created some holes. Why? Because if he wouldn't have done that, the scorpions would have died because of suffocation, right? Now let's move on. <clears throat> Okay, so now, uh, yeah, okay, so we reached till here. He was enraptured. Now the next thing is, let's see what is happening at home. Okay, 
So now uh, dawdling over the food, feeding our dog Roger surreptitiously. So who was being fed surreptitiously? It was the dog. Okay. And by whom? So you have to answer this question. I'm not going to tell. Okay. I completely forgot about my exciting new captures. At last, Larry, having finished his meal, ideally picked up the matchbox from the mantelpiece. Oh, yes. I forgot to tell you. Uh, when he, you know, had kept that matchbox and brought it home. So that time it was the lunchtime. Okay. And, uh, you know, like um, he was about to keep it in his bedroom. But since uh, the call was like, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this child was called by his family members for uh, the lunch. So what he did was very casually, he just kept that matchbox on a mantelpiece. Mantelpiece is kind of a shelf, okay, which is uh, made uh, at a little bit of height. And then you can keep small, small things, but not heavy things. Okay. So probably you can keep your candle stand or maybe flower vase or maybe your, uh, you know, uh, those agarbatti stand, all those incense stick stands. Right. So uh, that was the mantelpiece. And he just kept it casually there. He never ever thought that Larry would might uh, casually pick it and, you know, take it out. So the blunder was done by Larry. So now he finished, Larry finished. And then he uh, did not, uh, you know, just casually, unconsciously, he just got hold of that matchbox. And then what happened? All those things who were inside it came out, pounced. Okay. Then what happened? Now I mean, uh, okay, so she hoisted herself out of the box with great rapidity, her babies clinging on desperately and scuttled onto the back of the Larry's hand. They're not quite certain what to do next. Okay, so all these chota chota cute cute babies, they came out and you know what? Uh, they just came on hands of Larry. So supposing if this is Larry's hand, so they just came out from here and sat somewhere, maybe on uh, just above the palm. And Larry, imagine what Larry must have felt. Larry was somewhere, you know, uh, probably uh, it was something like when, you know, you have the bone, you can't even bone in bone. If it is stuck in your throat, you can't gulp anything inside neither can you gulp nor can you puke isn't it so it was something like that uh, because larry was able to understand that if he did any kind of movement the scorpions would feel attacked and then they might sting so he was in a very doldrum stage okay so feeling the movement of her claws glanced down to see what it was and from that moment things got increasingly confused so the the utter the utter chaos started from that moment and then what happened the entry of lucrezia who was lucrezia she was the maid and she was not a member of the family please remember she wasn't the member of the family okay so she was a maid who used to work and cook and all those things so now a maid dropped a plate and brought Roger out from beneath the table, barking widely. So now when uh, she fainted to find those scorpions on Larry's hand and uh, that plate which she might have been holding dropped on the floor. When it dropped, who was there under the table? The dog was there. And what was the name of the dog? It was Roger. So Roger just became mad and came out and started doing, you know, what? Barking. Oh, 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 like this. Because that, you know, that was also unexpected. How will that Roger understand that the stranger in the family was not only Lugrezia, but these scorpions, right? So he did like that. Now what happened? With a flick of his hand, he sent the the unfortunate the unfortunate scorpion flying down the table so now when he started barking this larry must have 
done like this, you know, shaked his hand. So when he shaked his hand, those baby scorpions started flying and they came down. Okay, they were on the floor. Now, who were there? Lucrezia's, Lucrezia's, uh, you know, um, uh, I can say uh, the lower portion of Lucrezia's body was there because we are not talking about what was happening above the table, right? So Roger was there under the table. Then these baby scorpions were there. And Lucrezia's feet was, you know, very much reachable for dog and for these uh, scorpions also, okay? So let's see what happened next. Now what happened? Okay, uh, the creature sped towards Leslie. So now Larry, he did, he shook his hand. So now these, uh, these small creatures, they tried to reach Leslie. So Leslie was another member, okay? So now what is happening? Her sting quivering with emotion, Leslie leapt to his feet, overturning his chair and flicked out desperately with his napkin. So what he was doing was, let me show you. Okay. So supposing this is the napkin. All right. So now when Leslie found, uh, you know, they had those uh, table napkins. So he started doing like this. Isn't it? What do we call in Hindi doing like this? Hanky jhatatna, right? So when he did like this, then what happened? It was something like, you know, showing away or rather distracting the scorpions. All right. So that was done. Now let's see who comes next. Margo, who promptly let out a scream that any railway engine would have been proud to produce. So Margo is the third person of the family. Now, what did Margo do? When Margo saw these things, she started screaming in the top of her noise, top of her voice. And what was that voice uh, like? It was as if, you know, a railway engine, uh, engine must have been rumbling, the rumbling wheels of a railway engine. So that was done by Margo. Mother, completely bewildered by his sudden and rapid change from peace to chaos, put on her glasses and peered down to the table to see what was causing the pandemonium. So now what did Mama do? Uh, let me show. So I'm really enjoying to, you know, show you how things were being done. So imagine if your show me ma'am is... Uh, you know, mother playing the role of mother. So what was she doing? Imagine the setup. Okay. So she was wearing her glasses like this. Okay. And then she must have been busy with something. So when this chaos was happening, what did she do? She was, you know, she was wearing her glass and she looked down. And then to her surprise, she found such a chaos. Okay, and what was the reason for the chaos? The reason for the chaos were those small scorpions and along with them, definitely the mama scorpion. Okay, so uh, she was able to see the commotion which was created and in vain attempt to stop the scorpions advance, hurled a glass of water. So she found to her surprise that the scorpions were, you know, moving towards her. Okay, and what she was supposed to do, she was totally lost. Her brains must have not been working. Definitely, if you find such creatures moving towards you like this, you won't be very happy or singing, you know, gala song or dancing around. But yes, you will definitely try to shove those creatures away from you. So what did she do? She put, you know, she poured glass of water on that. To distract them so that uh, they felt uneasy to move, right? Because water, that liquid thing, uh, will make them feel a little difficult in walking. The way, uh, the pace in which they were moving ahead. Okay, so the scorpion had now gone to uh, ground under the under Leslie's plate. So now, when they found water, they had to. Uh, you know, they had to look for a pl uh, place which did, which was comparatively very dry. So they found Leslie's plate and they started hiding under it. Okay. 
where the baby swamped wildly all over the plate. Roger, mystified by the panic, but determined to do his share, ran around and around the room, barking hysterically. It's that bloody boy again. You know, all those filthy, abusive words, exchange of words started happening. Why? Because no one, not a single person was expecting this kind of a thing to happen. And this child who had brought those beautiful creatures home, he was also, uh, you know, flabbergasted. He was totally taken aback. He did not understand actually what to do or how to react. Okay. So then what happened? Uh, all we need is a book. Road Leslie, but uh, don't panic, hit them with a book. So now what he did, he told that, okay, fine, chill. No need to, you know, panic so much. Because if you tend to panic, those creatures will also feel all the more attacked and they might do something wrong, okay? So now what is happening? Uh, it, he's, he's told that, okay, take a book and keep on just, you know, hammering it to distract. So that was done by Leslie. Then uh, what on earth the matter with you all? Mother kept imploring. So mother is now, you know, busy in her mopping. Okay. It's that bloody boy. He'll kill the lot of us. Look at the table. Knee deep in scorpions. So now um, all these lovely words were told. And uh, you can say that this is kind of an exaggeration. Um, type of hyperbole, you can say that, uh, but let's not talk about it here. Uh, quick, quick, do something. Look out, look out. So now this was told by whom? Probably it is told by Marco. Stop screeching and get a book for God's sake. You're worse than the dog. Shut up, Roger. By God's grace. I wasn't bitten. Look out, there's one. There's another one. Quick, quick. Oh, shut up. Get me a book or something. So now this is, uh, you know, the typical pandemonium uh, scene. Everyone is busy, hustle, bustle, chaos. Why? To kill the scorpions. So it's, it's uh, less about killing but distracting or rather trying to shove away the scorpions from that place. Okay. Hit it with your knife. Your knife, go on, hit it. So it was something like that when you find an, uh, such unwelcomed creatures creeping in your bedroom or wherever you are sitting and you feel really eerie. So what do we do? We tend to have this type of feeling. What feeling has been expressed by the author here? We tend to say that, okay, you do it. Then that person said, no, 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 you do it. So that was kind of a scene which is going on. All right. Um, since no one had bothered to explain things to him, Roger was under the mistaken impression that the family was being attacked. So now poor little Roger, the dog, he thought that something was really wrong. It was like, Puri dal hi kali hai. Isn't it? Because he was so naive. He wasn't even aware of what was happening. Right? So, next, what did he do? As Lucrezia was the only stranger in the room, he came to the logical conclusion. So, what did he do? He thought that Lucrezia must have done something due to which all his, you know, masters, they became crazy. They were behaving like crazy people. Okay. So uh, now what happened? This Roger thought that, okay, why not, you know, Roger give the punishment to this stranger. So he bit uh, Lucrezia's leg. Okay. Now what happened? Uh, Leslie's suggestion that the whole lot be slaughtered by uh, was quashed. So what was the... You know, uh, the suggestion given by Leslie that, you know, it should be slaughtered. The whole family of scorpion should be slaughtered so that they don't uh, multiply and then, uh, you know, uh, make their home uh, and abode of the scorpions. Okay. So they wanted, they did not want the scorpions to leave, to leave even a trace in their house. So Leslie thought that why not slaughter them? 
so that you know uh, the story totally comes to an end khatam ho jati kahani but then it wasn't so so next what happens while the family still simmering with rage and fright retired to the drawing room i spent half an hour rounding up the babies picking them up in a teaspoon and returning them to their mother's back so now what did he do he very steadily very swiftly used one teaspoon to pick up those baby scorpions and then he very affectionately had put them back on the back of the mama scorpion and then what happened then he carried them outside on a saucer saucer is what it's a small plate which are given along with the you know you'll find it in the tea sets small small plates uh with the with the utmost reluctance released them on the garden wall so finally he understood that his house his house could not be the home for these scorpions okay so you know like uh, you cannot uh, we know one thing that all of us are interdependent interrelated the life cycle is in such a way that all of us are dependent on each other we are dependent on the trees on uh, the plants for our survival the plants are also dependent on us in a way because we rear them we you know we water them we give them manures and things like that then the animals are also dependent isn't it for their survival so like uh, for example goats they eat grass so unless we grow grass how will the goats eat the grass and how will the life cycle be maintained right so uh, this talks about the interdependence okay and that we cannot take away anyone's freedom right in this story this child was actually uh, taking trying to he tried to take away the freedom of that of uh, of that family of that scorpion okay because that was just his you know childish desire to tame and you know watch them grow watch them uh, watch its movements and all so with that childish desire he uh, just uh, took away the freedom right but he understood the moment those scorpions came out from their uh, shell from that match box that sense of freedom that sense of you know that happiness to move around he was able to understand that okay he was able to understand that that when a bird is caged very gradually you know what happens the birds they tend to forget how to fly but when they are kept away from the cage when they are fed regularly you'll find that those birds would always come to you for their bird feed isn't it you must have noticed i'm very sure those who have those uh, you know small small feeders uh, made by you by those recycled material so if you keep something you know for those birds to feed on so those birds will definitely come to you and they will have those uh, eatables whatever you give and then they'll enjoy their own day again they will come during the evening or probably for some water if you keep water it is said that we should keep uh, water in a small bowl or in a bird feeder for the birds so they give you some positivity some positive vibes so it is said so so anyway so now in this chapter what happens this child he understood his mistake and then the moment he understood his mistake so he very affectionately very lo lovingly but at the same time with reluctance he brought those scorpions back to their own uh, place and if you can uh, if you can have a look on page number 80 80 look at the picture how the child is you know looking like this with his uh two palms uh hands uh just holding his chin up and then watching them how beautifully they get back to their place isn't it so that is what is freedom and that is how you know one uh, enjoys being free so don't you ever you know try to cage 
any words allow them you know that uh, that happiness to remain free there's no point of caging them rather you should allow some feeders or something so that those birds come to you they eat they drink you can you know uh, have those clicks the pictures and then uh, allow them to move wherever they wish to because if you keep on practicing this i'm sure those birds will definitely come back to you for i mean every day okay so he understood this boy uh, the author understood his mistake and then allowed those scorpions to get back the result of this incident were numerous larry developed a phobia about match boxes so one positive result was that this larry he started having he started dreading those match boxes because he uh, he used to be reminded of this incident so that was really one thing very nice okay a handkerchief wrapped round his hand lucrezia limped round the house her ankle enveloped in yards of bandage for weeks so now lucrezia was still there but then was limping and that reminded her that she should be uh, that she should have been careful while moving around when such chaos was there okay uh, but from my point of view the worst repercussion of the whole affair was that mother decided i was running wild again and that it was high time i received a little more education so now mamma rule mamma became a little bit more vigilant a little bit more strict and probably was thinking of sending uh, the author to a hostel you know or a boarding school or maybe uh, was looking for you know for being a little bit more strict so uh, that was what he dreaded all said and done by end of the day he uh, you know a child should also not be caged i mean everyone should be allowed to grow in his or uh, in her um, freedom i mean with freedom okay but yes checks and balances need to be done we cannot allow our children to simply uh, move around and do whatever they feel like according to their own whims and fancies what should be done is a proper monitoring is very much um, needed okay otherwise i'm sure our children like uh, definitely children of this generation they are very smart very intelligent i'm sure nobody would do things like this like trying to tame scorpions okay so that uh, so we have come to an end of this chapter so the main thing in this chapter was you know that it's uh, it's an extract and uh, extract taken from an autobiography okay and uh, yes you have a message that uh, you should have you know love towards each and every type of animals okay the love for nature the love for animals the love for birds so uh, these are very essential because you know by end of the day imagine if we don't have uh, anything around us do you think we would be able to survive we might survive for some time but you cannot survive for years right so uh, that was it i hope by now all of you must have understood uh, the message from this story the i repeat the message is love for nature love for animals and uh, yes freedom is very important we should not uh, you know take away freedom from anyone okay allow them to grow give them space okay because that is what the nature had be, has always given us okay we should always you know be in that both uh, both form it is like we are getting things from nature and we should also give it back the return gift is very important okay you cannot simply give away or rather i should say uh, it is give and take okay so give and take that barter system must be there so that we can conserve nature 
for a better uh, for a better greener planet okay for better survival for a uh, long uh, longer existence okay so signing off now take care all the best please read the the questions very carefully don't be in haste until then adios see ya bye good night